amount of cash. Huh? There's a large amount of cash right here. Five, five, six hundred dollars. Yeah, I've already got it in the evidence over there. Right off the rip tells us uh, his wife is mad because he spent all this money before they leave to go on a trip to Vegas. You know, because I, I had a sneaky feeling one of my one of a mutual friend of ours had told me that you know he guaranteed that there was a damn loan against it. So mm -hmm. I took the time I took the venom to the bank and told him I wanted to you know see if I could get a loan for it. And that's when they showed me that it had a, a lien on it. A lien on it. Yep. All right, if, uh, if you need to dry off, we can get your towel or something. All right, Mike. Now, I do got to let you know before we get started, this is a criminal investigation, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know when you called the sheriff. I don't know if he told you to come down here and talk to us or whatnot, but this is a criminal investigation. Yeah. This is completely voluntary up to you, okay? Yep. Don't have any charges or anything like that. Not under arrest, all right? Understand? I understand, buddy. Okay. You still want to talk to me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let me just write down the date and the time real quick. All right, Mike. <clears throat> this is involving a traffic stop that you did back in January of 2019 while you were at the city of Millersville Police mm -hmm. Department. You were working with them, um, I believe, as specialized unit yeah. patrol. Um, it's a traffic stop where you arrested Colby, mm -hmm. Jonathan, Katie. Yep. Can you tell me about that traffic stop and how it... It was just a... Start, start me from... How you set it up? Who set it up? Even if you know the CI number or anything like that, I don't, I just I don't know any of that. Okay. Uh, Link and I uh, stopped this vehicle, or I ended up getting uh, some bait pins off a guy that was a uh, informant. We were able to get some bait pins off of this. I forget the guy's name. Um, was a young guy. Worked out a side farm. Um, got the bait pins off of him. Right, mm -hmm. he turned around a week later and flipped on Harrison and Nico. Right. Okay, so he's uh, a gentleman that you don't remember his name. You initially stop him for vape pens. He is who flips on, on Nico the Harrison. Or, or Harrison. Yeah. Okay, so he tells you he can do he can get you vape pens. Yeah. What was what was set up to be bought? What did he set up uh, for y'all? We we set up an ounce of cocaine. Okay. Yep, and we set up. I forget how many vape pens. It was 90 or 100 vape pens. Okay. So he set up to buy an ounce of cocaine yep. and vape pens. Yep. Okay. Any idea how much money? I forget the, the amount. Did you supply this subject with any uh, money to buy to buy these nope. drugs? You didn't? Okay. Nope. This was him it doing was all, it? It was, a, it was a, all organized to, to go down. In the, in the beginning, it was going to be the gym parking lot mm -hmm. behind Chick-fil-A. And then it was all, uh, after that, after we decided that that was the county and we needed to make it happen in the city. Right. So we decided to do it at the Lowe's parking lot. Okay. Um, it all went down at the Lowe's parking lot. Um, we were able to get um, a little less than an ounce of cocaine. In the beginning, Jonathan was charged with trafficking. But when we put it on the scale and the... the the weight of the bag and the, the powder itself was less than an ounce. Uh, but he had a little small personal use that we added with it that could have made it been over an ounce, but I, you know, I didn't know. But anyway, um, the cocaine was found in the back seat with a Nico boy. Mm -hmm. uh, but since then, and I'm, I'm being honest with you, since then, I have, I have been talking with Jonathan and his whole family. Okay. A good bit. Okay. Jonathan has met me, he signed up as an informant okay. in, in Jones County to to help us. There was a, a 
a time that um, I met him and his father-in-law at um, Chick-fil-A, not Chick-fil-A, but Zaxby's and Gray, and we ate, ate lunch. There was numerous times that his father-in-law tried to bribe me in a sense that, you know, one of them was, I forget what it was, and, and I, you know, and I was like, dude, just let, let this course take, take its role. But I started changing. Initially, we, we seized his Mercedes. Whose Mercedes? Jonathan Harrison. Okay. Initially, we seized his Mercedes. Okay, in that traffic Proof. stop. Yep. Okay. We okay. seized his, we were going to seize it. The city was going to seize it. We kept his Mercedes for over a month before realizing that there was a lien on it. And then they decided that they weren't going to um, seize it. So they decided to give it back to him. Okay. But yet they made him pay storage fee for the whole time that they kept it. Okay. I didn't think that was right. I said, look, they, it's, they were, they filed seizure work on it. Well, and I was sort of giving him some advice on what to do. I mean, he provided me with names of where he got his cocaine from. One was a big player. Brian and Maben download the phones, yeah. and there's so many people also. So you download the phones from that traffic stop, and that was included in your investigation with them? Yep. I assume? Okay. All right. I've got the thumb drive and all that. Okay, all right. Um, I see. I haven't. I haven't had a chance to look at it. I went through his phone when I get the search warrant because it was unlocked. Just see what I was dealing with before I got a search warrant. See if it's worth getting a search warrant. So you know, I'm just. I've got I, a copy of the thumb drive. Okay. Uh, City Millersville's got the other. Okay. Other case files. Okay. I'm. I'm just you know learning this as we go. So other people over the period of time, he was. Um, he was telling me that um, one of the guys that. The guy that actually that flipped on them mm -hmm. was bigger than what they were. Who was who was that? Um, God, I can't think of his name, Rick. I, I just can't. Uh, we're not going back and looking because uh, we got like twenty vape, fifteen to twenty vape pins off of him. Me and Link did that okay. one night. Okay. And then he's the one that flipped Jonathan and them. Yeah. Okay. So did he? But give Jonathan you... goes back and tells me, "Hey, that guy's actually when he sort of figures it out." Mm -hmm. And I, I just. I, I made them believe that it was a Hispanic guy mm -hmm. that that done it all. Yeah, yeah. All right. You and, didn't uh, tell them who did him. No. Uh, right, right. But then he comes up and says, "Hey, I know this little boy had had something to do with it uh, because I I dug deep into that boy, that kid. That, for Christmas, he he gave his dad a a '67 Chevrolet truck, completely who, restored. Who did the first guy we got? Oh, okay, the one that, that got y'all, Jonathan and yeah. Colby. Okay, gotcha. So, who did Jonathan give you any other names, any other people or anything like that? Dude, he, some guy, some guy in, um, I want to say Forsyth is, yeah. Do you know his name or anything like that, what he was selling, doing? No, uh, okay. I just, I can't remember what he was Okay. All right. So let's let's go back to the traffic stop a little bit, because um, uh, that's where I, you know I guess I'm I'm still trying to figure it out. So you say that you got a little less than an ounce from yeah, him. Yeah, we weighed it up. Link and I weighed it up. And when y'all weighed it, mm -hmm. it weighed less than an ounce. It was right there at it with the bag. Okay. Because so I knew once it was sent off, yeah, that it was probably going to be less, but. All my cases prior to this case, if it was close, I charged them. You charged there. They that. can always come down with it. Yeah, so you charged and them yep. trafficking. Yep. So what I'm getting at is when you weighed it, was it more than an ounce or wasn't an ounce? It was less than an ounce. It was less than an ounce when you weighed it. Okay. But I didn't let Jonathan know when I served him with the warrant of trafficking cocaine that it was not an ounce. Who weighed it, you or Link? Uh... We both waited. We were both in like a little hand scale. A little hand scale. Okay, it wasn't yeah. nothing calibrated. Right, right, yeah. One of those typical, yeah. like, uh, just the hand scales that yeah. most everybody carries around. You told him that it was. You told Jonathan that it was 
an ounce, or at least an ounce, and he was being charged with trafficking, correct? I you, told him that when it, when it was put on the scale, it was, it was over, it was an ounce. And what we had ordered up was an ounce, so that's, that's what we went with. And you never told him it was less, ever? Later on down the road, yep. You I told him, yep. You've told and, him later on down the yep. road? When, as we're, we're talking, and he's, he's worried about being charged with trafficking, mm-hmm. I told him, I said, I said, man, don't worry about the trafficking. I said, That's, that was with the bag and, and the powder. I said, I'm sure when it comes back from the lab, it'd be less. I said, so you're probably looking at possession of cocaine with intent. And then that's when he says, oh, this, you know, Nico boy is the one. It was his cocaine. It was in the back. Did you, I'm sure you interviewed him, you know, during the traffic stop. I mean, that's kind of part of it. Yeah. Did you interview them afterwards? Did you take them, like, uh, did you sit down and, like, have any other interviews with Jonathan yeah, or yeah. Cole or did. Katie? Uh, did you talk to all three of them? Because it was... It Katie, was... Katie bonded out. She, okay. She bonded out the day before. And Steve Bradley actually called me and asked me if, if I'd be willing to give him a bond. Because my interview, he would, he seemed prominent at the police department that he could get get some, you know, big fish. Did he tell you names during the interview at the police department? We talked about several names, yeah, I believe so. So they would be, uh, if I if I was able to get those interviews? It would be names that I threw out that I knew he was associates with okay. through, through my investigation with social media, through Facebook. And stuff okay, like. so Steve helps you, or you and Steve communicate and get, mm-hmm. him, a, get him a bond. Yeah. And Jonathan gets out. Did he get, when When did you contact Jonathan when he got out of, bonded out of jail? He, I believe he contacted me. Or I was actually, I returned Katie's phone to her at the county jail. And and just so happened they were bonding out that night when I went up there. Okay, so he got taken from city to the county. Yeah. Okay. So, did you download Katie's phone? I don't, I don't believe so. Okay, downloaded Colby's John, phone? Colby's and Jonathan. And Jonathan's phone. Okay, all right. All right, so you saw him whenever he was bonding out. You're giving her back her phone, and he's bonding out. Um, so you mentioned vape pens. I just can't remember how much. All right, you got cocaine. You got vape pens. How many vape pens was it? A bunch. It was 90 or 100. I, I can't remember. I think it may have been 118, 119 vape pens. We took pictures of it. All right, so you got that. Did you get any was there any cash involved? There was some cash in the center console that was collected. Whose cash was it? Um, Jonathan said it was his cash. From, was it Jonathan's vehicle? It was in the center console. It was just some cash stuck in the center console. Got a large amount of cash. Huh? There's a large amount of cash right here. Five, five, six hundred dollars. You had to one. Do you remember how much it was? I don't. It was somewhere around. It was over five hundred dollars right now. Was there any other cash involved? I mean, that, t- granted, this is just me basing off of what I know, and it's, it's been just the cash that was in the car. Yeah. That, 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 that. I mean, like, did they have any more? Just because a hundred vape pens and an ounce of cocaine, I, it feels like to me somebody was toting around some cash. That's a that's not a cheap drug deal to go down. So, uh, see. The they were the ones was, bringing it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the boy buying it is the boy who had, buying it had all the cash. No, uh, he didn't have no cash. Really? Uh. Uh-uh. He just was setting it up and no, it was the, like the a, cash that he had was fake cash that uh, Mike um, Hudson had ordered. Oh, okay. And it was a stack of cash that big. Oh, so it's not even legitimate. money. No, it ain't legitimate. The, the top was legitimate money. Mm-hmm. And when I went to that guy's truck. I played it off. That, hey, look at all this cash. Oh, okay, cool. And then Jonathan was like, yeah, so he, he in his mind, was like, dude, okay. dude I, this one must be real. I'm tracking. Because, look, they, he's got all this cash that we were fitting to get for all these vape pens. Okay, I'm tracking, I'm tracking, I'm tracking now. Okay, so Jonathan only had about $500 cash in his vehicle. Nothing else, was, like, on his person. I think it was a little over 500 but it uh-huh. it was... Um, Around $500 cash, we'll say. Yeah. Nothing, no more. Was there any other cash there? 
Yeah. Okay. And then there was the fake cash that y'all had given the CI. Yeah, but it was it was actually uh, got back in my possession and right. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually I, pretty I cool. I've never. Yeah, I've never even heard of that before. Uh, okay. And that was in the I guess the informant's vehicle. Vehicle. Yeah. Okay. I even went to the bank, uh, exchange bank, and they gave me a ten thousand dollar band that come from. That goes Federal around Reserve cash. Yeah, yeah. That went on top, and so it all looked legit. Yeah, yeah. And I even showed it to the chief, and I showed it, and they were like, "Yeah, man, I think that that looks pretty good." All right, so they all bond out, and you start communicating with um, Jonathan. Um, did you was was Colby involved in anything? And like, did you start communicating with all three of them? Like, how now, did that work? Jonathan, I knew Jonathan was the the main leg of the whole mm -hmm. whole deal, so. When I talked to Steve and them, I told him, and uh, his attorney, uh, Carl Casino, I told him, I said, look, I said, um, Jonathan, I don't think Nico can do anything. Jonathan's going to have to to step up, and he's going to have to, you know, work to get these, you know, to help. His, this is actually his future brother-in-law. Colby is? Boy, yeah. Okay. How's Colby's Colby dates Jonathan's wife's sister. Okay. Okay. All right. So essentially Jonathan's the only one that that you were working or began to work. You didn't start to work Katie or mm -hmm. Colby. Okay. Was there any I mean, was Jonathan just working off of his charges or was he working he, off everybody's charges? I, I told him, I said, look, dude, I said, I don't think none of the other ones can do anything. Mm-hmm. And then after going back and looking at their record after the search warrant was done on their phone, mm -hmm. I didn't see any proof at all to where Katie knew what was going on when she came to Millersville that night. And Jonathan stated that she had no idea that they thought they were just coming to eat dinner. And Colby, Colby said the same thing in his interview, I believe. Did she see the cocaine too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she knew everything that was going on, but really. All right, so you did get, but you got John, Jonathan's phone and Colby's phone downloaded, mm -hmm. and those are in the case file. You did search warrants on them? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, okay. And then um, you said you also have a copy of the downloads? I do, yeah. It's in my office at, at uh, Jones County. And that was just because I had an extra copy, and I... Yeah, yeah. And it was my case. Right. Um yeah, I mean you're the, you're going to be the prosecuting officer. Um, so start working, Jonathan. Not Colby, not Katie. Uh, did you sign? All right, I don't know when you left the city. I don't remember. Do you know the date? No, I don't, man. It was. Did you? Okay. February. End of February, first of March. Okay, so there was time that you had to work, Jonathan, while you were still at the city of Millersville. Is that correct? Like, he would have been working as a confidential informant for you while you were working at the city, right? Because he got arrested on January 25th. Um, I, I didn't sign him up as a confidential informant until I got to Jones County. Okay. Did he do any work? Okay, hold on. So he was never signed up as a CI at MPD? Nope. Did he do any work for you? While, like, when you were working at the city, because you were still there, uh, you know, for about a month after he got arrested, give or take, um, did he do any buys or provide any information for you while you were there? Okay. He may have called me a couple of times, and um, and I think I was, I wasn't even that, I had gone to Jones County even when the car got, got uh, released to him. It just didn't make sense. So, all, all the uh, the times that we we used a record to seize the vehicle. Yeah. For some reason, this this particular time, Mr. Owen Pittman was requested by the chief to tow this vehicle. Okay. Uh, we towed it to his shop. It, it it was under. It was in a, a garage, in the in the shop at Mr. Owen's place the whole time. Gotcha. Uh, and then up until right there at the end, they decided they weren't going to seize it, and then it was put on, put on the lot. And I think um, when Jonathan got the okay to come get it, it was like on a 
Wednesday or Thursday. And they told him that um, there would nobody be there to pick it up, that he'd have to come back that following Monday. Uh, but yet, he was there to pick it up when he was told to come pick it up. And he said, no, wait until that following Monday. So that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, he got, got even billed on top of that. And he called and he was, he was bitching about it, complaining about it. And I said, look, man, I said, I said, you know, I have no control over what, what took place there. He says, well, yeah. you, you, you're the one that seized my car. Right. And I said, well, they just found out that there was a lien on it. Yeah, yeah. I said, can you get me documentation showing that there was a lien on it? So he got documentation and I, I ended up having to give it to Lieutenant Thompson. And right. Um, yeah, I mean, that just sounds like one of them situations you kind of can't help. It's kind of out of your control. Yeah. Um, so you said while that that earlier you mentioned that, which is Jonathan's stepfather, mm -hmm. he tried to... No, he wasn't. I mean, it, it's... Like, what was he doing? He was saying, he says, uh, man, if you ever need anything, you know, I'm, I got... He said, I don't want it to seem like a bribe and and, and so forth. Did he ever offer you anything? No. Uh -huh. So he never offered you any... No. He just no, said, if you ever need anything, yeah. he'll... He says, you know, I'll... I'll yeah. He said, you're a good guy. He said, I, I appreciate you giving them a bond. I appreciate you turning their phones back over to them uh, after the search warrant and all that was conducted. Um, he was just thankful because they didn't have to go out and buy. Because they, they had, like, Apple phones and stuff. He says, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to have to go out and buy another car. I'm going to have to... And then when all this stuff got the, you know, they see the side they didn't want to seize it, getting and things they, back, yeah, and getting things back, and I was helping them do it, yeah, uh, because I wanted Rick Thompson, yeah, helping them work through that process. Yeah. So, all right, so now we're at, but he he went back and said that it wasn't a bribe. You worded now, it earlier that he was trying to bribe you. Yeah, and I just told him I said, look, I said, and we made it clear that it wasn't a bribe mm -hmm. between him and I. Yeah, and. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, you get in a lot of trouble. And he knew that. So he never offered you anything to try and get Jonathan's charges dropped? Mm. All right, so at Jones County, has Jonathan done any buys for you? Has he done, yeah. what What work has he done for you at Jones County? He has called me numerous times, tell me about, about people. Uh, he's done surveillance on a, a case that I'm working on. What kind of surveillance and what kind of a case? Uh, I've got a pharmacy case that I'm working where a guy's, uh, he's a technician at a pharmacy at the Coliseum. He's selling pills. He's giving me descriptions on the, uh, his boat, sea do when he's at home, when he's not at home, and so forth. So Jonathan's called and giving you descriptions of boat, See dues and yeah, told you and, when he's and, and basically, uh, I figured it out um, through Facebook and some other stuff where the guy lived at. But uh, and then there's a guy that lives next to this guy that has uh, um, a bunch of gaming machines in his basement, and uh, he's selling drugs. And Jonathan is sort of scared of this guy, but he. Uh, he can probably order up drugs from this guy. Has he mentioned? I mean, has he? Has Jonathan offered to be able to? You know, I mean, yeah. I work dope a little bit. I know typically yeah, yeah. they offer like, "Hey, I can buy drugs from Mike yeah. Thompson or yeah. from yeah. you know yeah. Trace Weikert. So he's offered up. He, he he's providing information on people that are dealing. Okay. And do we know? But, but he's names? trying to he's he's trying to to say, hey, you know, I'm not in that no more. I done went through rehab, and I and I'm cool with that. Um, All right, so at any point in time, have you given Jonathan money to, or, you know, no. money to buy drugs? No. He's never done any kind of, never set up no. any kind of buys or anything like that for you. And if he's going through rehab, and, um, you know, I, I really don't like putting people back in that situation again after they've completed a, you know, rehab. So Jonathan, Jonathan tells you that he's clean now and he's he went not through rehab. He's been been going through classes. Um, he even told me that, you know, when I looked through his phone, that there would be uh, 
pictures of him and his wife and, and, and so forth. And, and it got to where um, it sort of, after looking through the text messages and stuff on his phone, it sort of made me a little sick to see the stuff that was on there. Uh, I mean, what, so I did. What was it, on it? Uh, they were all at the beach and they were all, I mean, it was just naked stuff and sent through, yeah. Jonathan? Jonathan, his wife. Or it could have been uh, the Nico boy and his girlfriend and there, yeah. Okay. Um, so Jonathan has never actually done any buys or anything like that. He's never received, um, you know, typically known as Peapie money or anything mm. like that. You never furnished him with any money. He's never set up any buys or anything mm. like that for you. Um, he's provided you with, uh, you know, some surveillance of a person that you're doing a pharmacy case on, and he apparently lives across the lake from him. Is that yeah, correct? Right. And then that guy has a neighbor. That, that guy has a neighbor that owns a restaurant here in Milledgeville. Which restaurant? Um, I think it may be here. Maybe, um, maybe if there's an El Tequila, there may be an El Tequila, uh, I mean, El Sombrero. Uh, uh, there's El Tequilas everywhere. I mean, yes, I think you know, it I mean, may be an El Sombrero. Okay. But the way he talked, it was um, the guy lived here in Milledgeville, and that he had gaming machines, and he was a big cocaine guy. Jonathan told you that. Yep. Have you ever met Jonathan? Have you ever seen him? No. He, he just don't fit the the typical person to go out and buy, like, meth and... Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, and, never, I've never seen him. I mean, him yet. he's just... Uh, All I know he's him. like a uh, preppy-looking dude. Yeah, okay. And, uh, so basically, about all you can do with him is get information, and, yeah. and if he can get, like, the big stuff. Okay, so he's only been good for... Um, essentially intelligence or yeah, yeah. a little bit of intelligence. But I mean, he's been willing. He's been wanting to go yeah. and, and, and do stuff. Uh, yeah. There was one time he met me uh, and he had a, a pressure washer and all that stuff hooked up to his truck. And I mean, that was, you know, when you work in informants, you know, that right there will throw somebody off if you to pull up in, in the haddock. Uh, we're fixing to do a big roundup in Haddock on the 21st. I done bought from like half the people down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to send him to Haddock in this truck with the pressure washer and just hang out at the store. And then when them guys show up on the corner, you know, see if, if, mm -hmm. if he could do some business that way. And uh, and there was times when I told him, I said, look, you know, and there was times when I just brushed him off, not brushed him off, but I said, look, man, I said, look, it's... Um, I'm sort of busy doing something else, but he was, he was, had an application in at the base, mm -hmm. which fell through here just recently. He uh, was trying to get a, get a job at the base. Any idea why it fell through? I mean, because they run a background that showed he had pending charges. Oh, okay. And I, I even called Carl and, and Steve, and I said, "Look, I said he's wanting to he's wanting to plea." And uh, Steve Steve called me up and and told me what the plea was, and uh, and then Jonathan called me up, and Jonathan's like, "Hey, what what's up with this? They, you know, they want to." I said, and I and I was honest with him. I said, "Look, dude, I said I wouldn't." If if it goes, I mean, he he was working for me, mm -hmm. and part of the deal was when he got out on bond, was if he if he worked and he provided information for me, his charges could possibly go away, mm -hmm. and and that's what that's what he was working toward. I didn't have a whole lot of time to to really get out there and, and bust with him yet, um, because I've been busy on doing stuff for the sheriff and. In trying to make as many buys as I can in Haddock mm -hmm. with this, I've got these two CIs. They're a, they're a husband and wife that I've been just working the crap out of. Are they working off charges or are they getting paid? They're getting paid. Okay. So they're buying in Haddock. Jonathan never bought in Haddock? Jonathan's never bought nothing. Okay. 
So when you talked to Carl and Steve about Jonathan saying that he, you said you mentioned that he wanted to plea. I mean, what did you tell them? What did you? I didn't. I didn't say anything. I said he's he's trying to hurry up and get this over with, so mm-hmm. it don't interfere with him getting that job at the base. Mm-hmm. And I was just trying to help him out. Yeah. What did you tell Jonathan as far as everything goes? I mean, was he involved in whatever plea deal you're trying to work up? I mean, what's he thinking was going no, on? No, he just told me. He said, look, man, he said, mm-hmm. they're trying to give me 10 years probation on two felony charges. And uh, he said the cocaine wasn't mine. It was in the back seat. And basically, I said, I said, yeah, the cocaine was in the back seat. You said it was in the back seat in front of Colby, right? Yeah, it was right there in the pouch. But you charged Jonathan... And Colby with it? Yeah. Did you charge Katie with it too? No. Okay. She got charged with the um, vape pen. Okay. All right. Where were the vape pens at? In the trunk. They were in the trunk of the car? Okay, so. There you... may have been there may be one or two vape pens in the floorboard. Okay, and then you mentioned there was some personal use cocaine too, right? In the front, in okay. the console. Okay, okay. And Jonathan said that when Colby got out of the car, before I could get around from the backside of Lowe's, Colby had gotten out of the car and made contact with the informant at his vehicle. And he said when Colby got out, he handed it to him and said, here, as if Colby had taken some out of the big bag for later down the road. Right. And that's what Jonathan said. Jonathan said he handed it to me and said, here. And he said he... Grabbed it and he put it in the console. Oh, it's like they skim it a little bit off top just for their own yeah. personal use, right? So yeah. you had an ounce to begin with, and now we took we each took us a little hit for ourselves. Okay, um, that makes sense. So and you may, you worded it that that Jonathan was under the impression that him working for you is, it would get his charges dropped. He was under that impression. I was under that impression too. You were under that. Who told you? I mean, what what made? So you said, hey, do you think this guy can do something? Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, I, you know, he's named some big names. And uh, he says, well, let's, let's see what he can do. If you feel like me, this guy will work, we'll give him a bond. And we got a bond. So, but Steve made you feel like he would drop the charges altogether, like completely? Not completely drop them. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I told Jonathan, I said, look, I said, you're, you're probably looking at possession uh, of the vape pens. And he, Kobe's looking at possession of the cocaine. And I was just being honest with him. Okay. Dude, I'm, you know, I don't have a problem dropping it. Right. I've dropped it, you know, cases before. Um, have you ever gotten any money from Jonathan before? Uh, there was a, a time that uh, we, Janae and I were on our way to Vegas. I stopped in Macon. I took, I uh, went somewhere. And I was coming back through making. No, I had a meeting at the uh, uh, DA's office in Macon, or U.S. Attorney's office in Macon. And on my way back, I stopped at a convenience store. And I, uh, I was in the convenience store, and there was this black guy scratching off lottery tickets. And uh, I got me an energy drink. And when I was standing there at the... Uh, Cash register. I looked over at the guy and I said, hey man, you having any luck today? He says, uh, no, nah, they're taking all my money. I said, you need that number 32 right there. That was my badge number. Mm-hmm. I said, you need to play that number 32. And he looked up there and he said, man, that's a $10 ticket. And I walked over there and I looked. And I told the guy, girl behind the counter, I said, give me that $10 ticket. Mm-hmm. And um, she gave me the $10 ticket. I scratched it off right there and won $500. I come back to the police department. I showed that $500 ticket to Dre. I showed it to Mike Hudson. I showed it to all of them. Well, at lunch, Jonathan and his father-in-law met me to eat lunch in Gray. And um, they said they were just coming through and wanted to know if I could meet them to eat eat lunch that they had some uh, Jonathan had some information he wanted to share with me and uh, his father-in-law wanted to talk to me about his daughter and in reference to her getting an attorney if he thought it if I thought it'd be smart well we eat lunch I meet him there we eat lunch 
and I went to leave, and I held up that lottery ticket, and I told, told him, I said, y'all, oh, y'all, y'all, look, I'm leaving to go to Vegas in a little while. I said, look at this ticket. Lo and behold, I lost the ticket before I could, I could cash it in. I don't know if it fell out. I went back to the parking lot of the Zaxby's and looked. Uh, I looked all over the place. I looked in the crow car, just everywhere. Couldn't find it. Well, um, I called or the next time I talked to Mr. Ricky, and I said, y'all ain't gonna believe this. I said, my luck has changed. He says, uh, what's that? I said, I lost that, that $500 lottery ticket. He said, what, are you kidding me? I said, yeah. I said, I don't know why I'm to it. And uh, Jonathan says, hey, dude, he said, uh, I know you fixed me to go to Vegas. If you, if, uh, if you want me to spot you a little bit, he says, um, I'll be glad to spot you something until you get back. So he did. So Jonathan found out that you lost the ticket. Yep. Or he, yeah. And then he offers to give you to, money. To go to Vegas on. Okay. How much money did he offer to give you? A thousand dollars. And um, and I told him, I said, look, dude, I said, it ain't, you know, that wouldn't be right. That mm -hmm. wouldn't be right for you to give me money i said it just ain't ethical in what i'm doing and and you know and then he he said look dude he said you know we've been talking enough now he said we're he said i consider you a friend he said you've helped me out a lot you've uh, you've got me clean um and that's where that's good so you knew if you took that money that wouldn't be a good thing to do yeah and I, and I explained it to him that that wouldn't, that wouldn't be right. Did you take the $1,000? I did. And then uh, there's been, when I come back from Vegas, I said, hey, man, I said, uh, you want to meet me at the Fish and Pig? I said, I, uh, I got this $1,000. What made it, Adam, uh, made it clear to him that, hey, dude, it's... Um, it's no bribes. You're not getting, you know, I'm not doing any favors for you. And he knew it. So you offered to meet him at the fishing pig? Several times, yeah. And did you, and what was the intention of meeting him at the fishing pig? To, to give him that thousand dollars back. Is fishing pig and bacon? Mm-hmm. That, that's where we do the, uh, we do our detail there. We have a detail there. Dawson County has a security detail there. Really? That's in Bibb County though, right? Mm-hmm. How'd y'all swing that? They've always done it. I've never been. I've heard of it. I mean, and that's why I told it. I said, hey, dude, I'm going to be at Fishy Pig. How about meet me over here? And you were offering to give him the $1,000 back? Yeah. And he just recently sent me a text message saying, hey, dude, he said, uh, what about what about that $1,000? He says, um, well, what does he say? Yesterday. What does he say whenever... Whenever you're offering to give him the money back, I mean, does he not show up or what? I mean, what is he saying? What's going on with that? I mean, like, hey, come to the fishing pig. What's he? What, he, what happened? he just says that he's he's out of town. That they were deep sea fishing or something. So he never showed up and got the thousand dollars. No, uh, but he just recently, yesterday, I think it was the day before yesterday, sent me a message saying, "Hey, I'm ready for that that thousand dollars." He says, uh, "I didn't get the job at the base." He says. Um, if you got it, and I was actually, I just hadn't responded to the text message yet, but. Uh, but I don't want it to seem like, Rick, that I've, you know, I've passed, I went over any boundaries or, or nothing. It was just honest. I know in some people's eyes it would look like it was some kind of crappy something going on, but. Um. So my my checking account, my wife's checking account has about thirty grand in it. Right. I mean, I don't need. I was he he made, as a matter of fact, I had a good buddy that met me on a dirt road that wanted me to take two hundred dollars for him and and spend on the the uh, slot machines. And then that's what Jonathan was saying. He said, "Hey, take this, and you need to go to this slot machine, and you need to put it on this slot machine." And then when I was in Vegas, I said, "Dude, I don't." That grand is gone. The uh, 
first time playing, uh, what is it, craps? Mm -hmm. First time playing craps. I said, look, man, I said, your money didn't last long. He said, man, he says, it's all good as long as you're having a good time. So, uh, did, how did you get the, I mean, but you were going to pay him back with some other $1,000 that... Yeah, I just, I, I told him, I said, dude, when you, just whatever you want, let me know. I mean, I, I blew it on this, on these tables. And then he sent a text message, hey, well, um, when you want to spend? No, he said, think about when you can get me this, this $1,000 back. Something, I'd have to go back and look at it. Has he ever given you any other money? Nope. He's even offered to buy my the, my lunch that day at Zaxby's, and I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't take it. Uh, did you ever ask him for money at any point in time? Nope. You said he he offered nope. this money to you. Did you ever ask him for the nope. money? Nope. So you've never asked Jonathan for any money. Nope. Basically, that guy needs seventy five hundred dollars a day. And you just pick the motorcycle up and carry it to your shop, and then when my money comes from my 401k, I'll, I'll pick it back up. Has Mr. Ricky ever offered you any money? Nope. Have you ever asked Mr. Ricky for any money? Nope. Okay. So he gave you, when When did you go to Vegas? I mean, even if you don't know the specific day, like in a roundabout month. So, I think it's the end of February. End of February? End of February, 1st of March. Okay. It was just for like a three-day convention with the wife. Okay. Um, at this point, I mean, what's the status with Jonathan's charges? Do we know? Do you know? I don't. I don't know. Do you? He's know? got a ten-year, ten-year plea deal mm. of ten years probation, and he's being charged with a felony with a vape pen. Okay. Um, have you told Carl or the judge or Steve or anybody about any work that Jonathan's done? I told Carl that. He has he has been cooperative. I told Steve that he's been cooperative. But have you ever told them of any specific work that he's done? They don't want to know. Jonathan was a big fish. Um, I, I had the chief several times send me a text message saying, "Hey, who is this guy again?" I I told him, "You got a picture of him. Send me a picture of him." I send the chief a picture of him, and then just sort of like fell off for a little while, and. Um, Jonathan um, didn't know why, and um, I didn't want to come out and tell Jonathan, hey, I don't know if it's cause someone at the police department has put the word out there and he's he, it's done spooked him. I said, well, let's just give him a little bit. I said, and he'll come back around. Where's to live? Macon. Okay. Um, so is on the phone downloads, is there any kind of uh, contact between Jonathan and I mean, would, I, would we be able to see that if we looked at the phone downloads? Yeah, uh, between Jonathan and mainly Nick. Son. Okay, so matter of fact, I think it was the week that I I was the weekend that I was in Vegas is when he actually made made contact with. Nick. Okay, and see, Jonathan owned gyms. He owned three gyms. Um, then you had um, uh, Thompson was a trainer at one of the gyms. And was a trainer at Bodyplex here in Milledgeville too. Really? Mm -hmm. For how long? For what? I, I personally, and I know uh, one time we were all down in uh, Panama City, and I walked into in Heather his room. Uh, there we were all in the same condo, mm -hmm. and I went down to see if they were ready to to go out to dinner, and there was a big bag of cocaine on the table. Uh, and it was like a slap in my face. Dude, dude, it'd be a, it'd be a, you'd be a blessing in the sky if you just you go grab that scoop. With me being in law enforcement, now this is when I worked, I was a jailer back then. Mm. I wasn't a jailer, I was, uh, I hadn't gone through academy yet. But uh, I was employed with Jones County. I was, I, I was actually working a wiretap for them. Do you know what year that was? When did you go through mandate? 2013. So you weren't certified whenever you saw the cocaine. You got certified later on after that. Yeah. And I, I even told my wife, I told my wife, I said, you know, I went in there, I, I said, I could swear that was a uh, pile of cocaine on the table. I said, that's almost a slap in my face. That did it. That's right. Oh. And uh, she agreed. And uh, so I knew that, and I knew that there was a big uh, cocaine here too, um, just the, from the word on yeah. the street. Uh,
Worked at Body Plex for a while too, yeah. right? Give me two seconds. Sorry. And my watch kept going off. I left my freaking phone in there. Um, how? Well, all right. So when you communicated with, so you signed up Jonathan as a CI. Colby's mm-hmm. not a CI. How did you communicate with Jonathan? Like, did y'all communicate text messages, phone calls, face to face meetings? Like, how were y'all's communication? Text messages, going down? Okay. phone calls. Yeah. Did you use a work phone or I don't? I, the only my, number I have for you is a personal phone. number. Personal, yeah. Do you have a work phone? Yeah, right here. Okay, so that's Jones that's County Jones phone, County phone, and then yeah. you have a personal yeah. phone. But you only communicated with Jonathan on your personal phone. Yeah, because you because I just got this one. Right, right. You met him. You and Jonathan were started working together essentially when you were at the city. And yeah. I don't. Did you have a work phone when you were at the city? I did, but I you didn't. Use but it. just for okay. a very short time. I can't stand an Apple phone. I personally love them, but... But if you had... See, I've got a Samsung. If you get used to it, you I, I, I had a Droid, but then yeah. but then when you go to an Apple phone, it's all different. And it just... All right, so you never use the work phone to communicate with them? Mm-hmm. Um, how many face-to-face meetings did y'all have, aside from when you were arrested them? Do you recall? Two. Maybe three. You signed up... Um, we ate lunch with his phone off. Uh, then the day that he got his car out of impound. When was the date, or like when was the time frame that y'all had lunch and you had lunch with Ricky versus when you left for Vegas? Like, how was there days in between? Same day? Like, how did that go? I can't remember, man. It's, I can't remember. But you met them, you ate lunch with them before you went to Vegas, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the, the, the day that I ate lunch with him was the day that I lost that, that uh, lottery ticket. Okay. So you hadn't cashed in that lottery ticket. You were mm-hmm. just toting it around. Yeah, I, I actually went to, I showed it to uh, Mike Hudson and them at the house because yeah. they, they wouldn't believe it. And the way it went, would it be in that number 32 slot and all mm-hmm. that? I thought that was pretty pretty neat. Right, right. And then uh, went to lunch and we were fixing to leave. I said, hey, check this out. How lucky can this be? And they walked over there and I showed it to them and I put it in the car. I put it on the sun visor up here. I don't know if it blew out me going in the road yeah, yeah. or what. But when I got to the, I was waiting to show it to Janae and uh, let her be like, wow, you know. Right, right. And uh, so when I got home, I looked up and I said, dang, it ain't up there. So I shoot back up to uh, the parking lot of Zaxby's because I thought I may, it may have come out there. Looked there and, um, and then either Jonathan one called, and I'm like, man, y'all ain't gonna believe this. I, that $500 air ticket is gone. I, I lost it. And then yeah. that's when Jonathan said, oh man, don't, dude, if, if you need something until you get back, let me know. I said, I'm just planning on playing the tables. He said, well, how about um, how about play the clock machines for me? And that's that's the way we left it. Um, and then I had another buddy of mine call up, and uh, I was talking to him, and he says. Hey, he says, if you go to the high-risk slots, and he was naming, you know, the place in Caesar's Palace that I needed to go, mm-hmm. what machines to play and how to play them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, you just go, just don't sit on one, just keep going back and forth, back and forth. And uh, and uh, he actually said, here, here, he reached in his pocket and said, here, here's $200. Let me know how you do them. Mm-hmm. Who was that? Uh, my neighbor, Mr. Don Johnson. The bondsman? Yep. I ordered his dog, and I'm real close with his family. He lives right down the street from me. When he goes out of town, I go down and order his dogs and, and so forth. Gotcha. Uh, so you never asked Jonathan for that $1,000, though? Uh-uh. He, he says, hey. And it, the way he worded it was, play these on this machine. You play these on the machine. Uh, and I told him, I mean, all right, so yeah. this is what I can, uh, this is, this is what I've been, has been brought to my attention. Yeah. Jonathan is alleging that there was more money in the vehicles and that it's now missing. You know, he alleges y'all gave him a receipt for like $1,400. I don't know. I've never seen the receipt. I don't have a clue. Mm-hmm. Him and Carl came and talked to us about it. Uh, that 
y'all gave him a receipt for fourteen hundred dollars. He's a legend. There was thousands more dollars in this car, and we're trying to figure out if it went missing. Okay, and so you know what I mean. It, well, I take a polygraph on that. Right. Yeah. So and there was there's video. Body right. Camera. Right. And, and we just we haven't yeah. gotten to that yet. We're trying to just start doing stuff as quick as we can so we can nip it in the bud and you know before it flusters and, and gets huge you know so we're trying to interview people and and do what we can and and, and get it taken care of so you know there was never any more i, I know you mentioned seeing 500 dollars in there and they're saying something about 1400 dollars. where do you, any idea where that extra no i just know it was over and i think the seizure was total like a thousand dollars but that was with the mm -hmm. other boy's money too, right? I have no idea. I haven't looked at the case file. I mean, you, you could probably hear me say, I asked him clearly, mm -hmm. and I do that, is if, there, if there's any cash involved, Rex, I say, hey, is this your money? Yeah, that's my money. How much money is this? Mm -hmm. And then when they tell me, and it's all on body camera, yeah, that's him knowing how much money he's got, and it's there. And they get, So you go back and look at the body camera, dude. And, okay. Dude, I wouldn't dare jeopardize my career over some bullshit like right, that. Right, right. Um, well, you know, just to cover X, Y, and Z, I mean, are you in any kind of financial troubles, any kind of financial debt? The wife, dude, we're doing good. Yeah. So there's no, I mean, no civil issues at all. There's no, I mean, no debt whatsoever. There's no big bills looming over, nothing like that. Okay. Like, I mean... I assume what you got a home loan, your house paid off, or anything. Like that. I mean, what yeah, all? It's the white. It's all in Janae's thing. It's all in my wife's thing. The house is. Yep. Uh, the only bill I have is a cell phone bill and a power bill and a pop, uh, cable bill or satellite bill. So you don't have any financial troubles whatsoever. Nope. You know, I'm just trying to cover up, or not cover up. I'm trying to cover, you know, any reason why. Jonathan would say that you've taken this money. You know what I mean? If there's yeah. a good reason for you to even have a reason to take that kind of money, you know. And typically, I mean, it, people take money because they need money. You know, if you don't, if you say you don't have financial problems, you know. What if I mean? there was thousands of dollars in that car, we missed that mm -hmm. on our search, yeah. and and it, it, somebody at the damn record service got it. Right. Um, there wasn't thousands of dollars, and when we searched it, yeah, I remember. And, there was some cash in the console, and I looked at him. I said, hey, is this your money? He said, yeah. I said, how much is this? And I can't remember what he said. I thought he said like 600 some dollars. I can't, I can't remember. And then I put it back. Yeah. And I put it into an evidence bag. Okay, right. And, it was and then when we got to the office, Link was there. We counted it all out. Mm -hmm. And then there's a seizure. Seizure was done. Paper done, on, yeah. Did y'all do? Did y'all do like a evidence sheet where like Link did account, you did account, and it's all we were we were both there together. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. And so the only other thing you've Jonathan's given you a thousand dollars that he offered up to you. Yeah. Yeah. You've never asked no, him for no, any no, kind of money. No. Um. You know, I mean, have there been any situations where Jonathan has asked you for any kind of money or anything like that? Mm -hmm. You said recently he asked you for the thousand dollars back. Yeah, and that was just like yesterday. Okay. And a matter of fact, when I leave here, I'm going straight to Ricky Hewitt or whoever I need to and give him his money back. Yeah. Because I don't want to be tied up no bullshit. That's the first time he ever asked back. Asked. Other than me calling him up and say, "Hey, meet me at the fishing pier." And he'd say, dude, I'm out of town or something. And, yeah, dude, this, this is crazy, man. This is, like, really crazy. Have you ever promised Jonathan anything in any way, shape, or form? I hadn't, been. Yeah. Did you ever promise him that you would drop his charges or that nope, nope. if he gave you for that $1,000, you would drop his charges? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, I mean, is there anything that I haven't asked you about involving this? No, man. It's you think just, I need to know? Mm -mm. Um, just, Brother, I'm, you know, curious question. Any text messages between you and Jonathan that you may have, would they still be on your personal phone? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you've used text messages, phone calls, and you've met face-to-face -face three times. That's how you yeah, communicate yeah. with Jonathan. Is there any, do y'all ever Facebook message or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Um 
do y'all ever? I mean, does he have multiple phones or just one phone? I mean, is it just y'all uh, communicate it, on one? He had multiple phones in the beginning, I yeah. think. But uh, I mean, like when you've been communicating with him, is there'll, it there'll be one phone yeah, number? It should be, yeah. Have you ever communicated with Colby in any way, shape, or form? Have you ever communicated with Katie in any way, shape, or form? Nope. Okay. So just Jonathan. All right. Um, now, if I if I got any more questions at some point, in the, you know, down the road, I I give you a call and let you know. But you know, as of right oh, now, dude, I just dude, I'm, you know, dude, I'm not as square as a uh, a block, dude. I'm I'm like I take my my job serious. I, look, I mean, you know, I I've yeah. seen you out there working and stuff. I, I know how big you're on on your job and being the police and, and doing a good job and, and doing the right thing. So we're gonna get to the bottom of it, and you know, if I need to talk to you, you know, please do. I'm sure at I mean, some I'm, point there might be more questions i don't i don't know we're just getting started with this and, and trying to, to make some headway and figure yeah. out what the heck's going on all right let's get you out of here get you back at the pool no dude i'll fix uh, i'm gonna make some buying today hey first thing i'm gonna do is go talk to my sheriff good to see you mike you too brother call that door right there it's june 13th 2019 uh time is 6:35 p.m we're at the ball county sheriff's office my name is Michael D. Thompson. I'm 48 years old. All right, Mike. So, you want to talk to me? Yeah, I'll talk to you. Do you want to tell me? Do you know your charges? No. Okay. Right now, you're charged with false statements and violation of the office. False statements? Yeah. So, you want to tell me the truth? Dude, I've told you the truth. <clears throat> Mike, I've got you charged with false statements because obviously I know about statements that you've made that you lied to me about. Okay. I have recordings. I've I've studied a lot more than I let on to. I I, 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 I know that. Right. But I tell you, I tell you what, Rex. Uh, and I love you to death. I think the world of you. I think of you, your brother. But going forward, I think I I need to go and hire me in the Okay. That's perfect. Will I be able to get a bond, man? I you know I don't get to pick that. I don't get to yeah. set their felony charges. Are they felony charges? <laughs> yes. False statements is a felony. Violation of the office is a felony. I can't set bonds on those charges. Um, you know, you're not going to be housed here. I don't know if you're aware of that, but you're, they're not going to house you here. Um, and so I, I'm sure that you'll, you know, the judge will be the one to decide mm -hmm. about that. All right? Yeah. Uh, do you have any other questions to ask me? Yes. All right, brother. All right, we'll just hang out and let me get Steve and we'll get you out of here. Oh, well, now this is just some, uh, I, I'll term it as housekeeping. This is an arrest record. This has nothing to do with, uh, Nothing to do with you know questioning by any means. This is just for our uh, ID purposes. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you go by any nicknames? I know you with Mike, you know, Mike, but yeah. anything else. Um, so, where were you born at? Spar. I believe it. Back. Uh, what's the zip code for Haddock? Uh, three one zero three three. Got any uh, tattoos? Yeah, I've got uh, several on my back. A scripture. Of John three sixteen mm -hmm. and uh, crucifixion, uh, Christ on the cross. All right. Hey Rick, I tell you what, I will talk to you, and then and at any time can I exercise it? Or, I mean, I don't mind talking to you, dude, because I I don't feel like I've lied to you. Mm, man, like I, put me in the can time. can I you can I there. explain something to you? <clears throat> Look, okay, Let, let's let's go uh -huh. to this. You've been read your rights. Mm -hmm. You acknowledge your rights. You That's know right. your rights. Yep. You invoked your rights on me and asked for an attorney. Yep. You've now changed your mind on your own. I have not coerced you in any way, and you want to talk to me. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I have not coerced you. I have not asked you to make a statement. You've decided on your own to make mm -hmm. a statement, knowing your rights and having... I mean, right. if, that, if we can agree on that, then I'm fine with it. You can talk to me and tell me whatever you want to. And you know, in the beginning, in the beginning, when um, when I met um, Jonathan over there off of Gray Highway in, in Bibb County. Okay. Uh, we were in his his car. I pulled up, and uh, it's like a couple of days after that we were going to go. To, I was scared to go out to Vegas, and I told him I lost my my ticket, and uh, he. Uh, willingly said hey you know take this and spend it on the lottery right i mean spend it on the uh 
at the casino. And um, so that's 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 what took place, right? Um, I think there was a time that I even called him when I was in Vegas. Uh, you'll probably see that on the uh, records to where I called him when I was in Vegas. And, and I pretty much told him, I said, dude, that thousand dollars is gone. Pretty much it's, it's you know, this uh, roulette table, I mean, this uh, craps table, and this slot machine, and then, I mean, it's, it's gone like that. Uh, but getting back to his case, uh, there were times that he talked about, he said, man, I know that weight was under, uh, I mean, he was trying to tell me, it was under an ounce, it was under an ounce, it was under an ounce. I said, yeah, I said, yeah. And I pretty much told him, I said, when we waited, it was right at an ounce, but with a bag and stuff. I feel like that's where you're, you're trying to say, hey, that, yeah, that I lied to you. Okay, that's it. I'm, I'm good. I can get Okay. All right, buddy. All right. Well, I just I no, my career over. It's gone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love you like a brother too. I respect you. It doesn't change my respect for you. Um, I'll pray for you. But keep your head up. Yeah, man. Okay. Uh, you're not, dude. I mean, I this this floorboards made two felonies. I mean, am I looking at prison time? No. You know, I can't answer those questions. I don't. I don't know. It's not up to me to decide. I don't need to pick what what happens to you. That's on. That's on the district. Now, where am I going to be housed at? You don't know. Uh, they know. I do not. Currently, I do not know. Okay. Um, give me just a second. I do have to take. Uh, it's just for our records. Um, don't know where you're going to be housed. That's between Sheriff Massey and whoever else. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's between Sheriff Massey and wherever you're being housed. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, but if. You got any questions or you ever want to talk to me uh, you know contact me through your attorney and have your attorney with you and yeah. we can, we can yeah. talk